materials on the fascia and the uh, uh, Steinway in six. Uh, do we have any, Nick, do we have any work sessions planned for? Did you guys uh, put anybody that? All right, that was Kathy. Kathy, I just put you on mute. Uh, Peter, we don't have any work sessions scheduled okay. for the next work session, and I think that was a good time to remind people, um, if you are not talking, please keep your microphone muted. <laughs> and I'll let everybody you. know that this meeting is being recorded and will be provided on uh, the Town of DeWitt webpage. Thank you very much, and uh, we, uh, the minutes were distributed, and I'd like you to do a roll call because I can't see everybody in, with your name. Uh, uh, Nick, would you send Joe Muller an invite, please, on a text? Uh, yes, we'll do. Thank you. Um, we have Doug, so, Jamie, pardon? Kathy, uh, let's see, Steve Schroeder. Yep. Joe will be on shortly. He's just looking for his link. Okay, um, may I have a, a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? And they were uh, they were corrected, they were revised. Proper I'll spelling. make a motion, Peter. Thank you. I'll, Thank you, I'll second, Steve. Okay. Steve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Kathy. Yep. Doug, aye. Steve, aye. Kathy, you, aye. Go text your text, you'll get a link. Okay, uh, first item was the Britain Field. Uh, like uh, we've discussed this at, at some length, but not all the board members were present. Um, so I'd like to have uh, the applicant, uh, who's gonna represent uh, Britain Field Parkway Laboratory? Hello, my name is Brody Smith. I'm an attorney at Bond Shenick and King. Um, I'm here representing Britain Field. I also have Dave Aiello, who is the uh, construction manager, and my client, Vincent Durani, who is the principal of the property owner. Okay. So, uh, Brody, if you could just, you know, summarize for everybody uh, just where we are with this, uh, and also uh, if somebody else wants to talk about the material and the, where it's going to be, where you propose to place the material. And uh, I know that it was sent around. Thank you very much, uh, whoever did that. So we, we got a chance to look at that. And uh, But I wanted all of the board members uh, that weren't able to look at it during the work session to um, uh, have a look at it tonight. Make a final decision. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, present this proposal to amend the existing site plan to the board. This site plan was approved in September of 2019. It involves the redevelopment of an existing building on Britain Field. It was previously the Dig Safe building. As you may recall, Dig Safe built a much larger building to the west of, of this building. Um, and that frees up this building for development. The ultimate use for the building will be as a laboratory in connection with Hanford Pharmaceuticals operations in the region. Um, the original approval and the original elevations included three different types of metal panels of different colors um, as part of the approval. Through the course of the, um, the development of the building, uh, it became evident that the use of metal on all those surfaces would make the project prohibitively expensive. So the applicant sought alternatives that may be acceptable to the town, including the use of EFIS on some of the surfaces and initially proposed an EFIS with a finish that appeared to be metal. And there was some correspondence back and forth with planning staff through the spring um, until it became evident that that was not a solution that was attractive to the town. So in order to bring the this process to a conclusion, 
we um, sort of backed off from that original EFIS proposal uh, with uh, you know most of the building being clad in EFIS that had a metal finish um, and uh, presented this, which we view we think to be a, a reasonable compromise proposal, and that's what you see on the screen. And what you see on the screen is a building with the the areas that are blue that that's one metal type that would have a a metal cladding also. You see the mission red area, that's another um, metal cladding. And on the top of the screen, on the left, that's the east elevation. That is the elevation that faces Britain Field. And to the right of that, you see the south elevation. That is essentially the front door that faces the parking lot. What we're asking for is the ability to substitute um, part of the west and north elevation, what appears gray on the screen, um, and I thank you, uh, Nick, if you're the one with the hand, I appreciate that <laughs> um, showing where we're talking about, or Emily. Emily. I appreciate it. Um, the, uh, the two gray areas, that's really what we're here talking about. We'd like to put EFIS in, the, in, in there, and that's essentially the back of the building. The west elevation faces the new dig safe building. It doesn't face any street and isn't, isn't evident from any public, public location. The north elevation faces 298, but is uh, screened by um, uh, it's eight, I believe it's eight trees. Uh, and those those trees make that part of the facade not visible from the road. So by allowing some EFIS on the essentially the back of the building, it would uh, help quite a bit in lowering construction costs. And we don't do not believe it would reduce the um, attractiveness of of the building, it would still very much appear to be, you know, as the original approvals had it. Um, at, and I think that, you know, the key fact is we've, you know, we've we've sought to compromise here and, and listen to the input that we got from planning staff about keeping the south and east elevation all metal clad. Um, I'll stop there, and uh, I'm going to turn this over to David. Did I did I accurately characterize that? Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think you. Uh, I think that sum sums it up. And then, lastly, um, I'd just like to invite um, Mr. Durani to just give you a little bit more on on the uh, the purpose of the building, and we'll try to be brief. Uh, but I, we want you to understand what this building will be used for, and you know our desire to make it as best as it can be. Thank you. Yeah, uh, a couple of months back, uh, we did an acquisition of Hanford Pharmaceuticals in Syracuse. Uh, the what. Hanford manufactures a number of uh, antibiotics, uh, penicillin products, some of them for the dairy industry, which uh, certainly help out the New York, uh, the upstate New York area. Uh, the laboratory at the current facility at, at Oneida Street is antiquated uh, and is getting to the point where it probably can't pass an FDA inspection anymore. So what we what we decided to do is take the laboratory facilities off site and uh, acquire this building. Uh, right now, we're putting about $5 million uh, between purchase price and improvements into the site. It's going to be state-of-the-art. Uh, we have some plans in the future that we would be doing other, uh, other than supporting our own manufacturing needs, we'd probably be reaching out to other areas um, uh, within uh, the greater Syracuse area to do the laboratory work as well. Uh, this could help farmers uh, test their milk, et cetera. Uh, so again, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm not suffering from hay fever, it's been driving me nuts. Uh, but anyway, uh, just to make a long story short, uh, in, in, in Syracuse, we currently uh, employ about 140 people at the Hanford facility. We also own another site uh, jointly with a company in Italy called Steri Pharma, which is on Southwest Street in Syracuse. That particular facility is a state-of-the-art sterile manufacturing facility uh, that makes one product from Merck called Zabraxa. Uh, it's a high-end antibiotic that's been uh, actually used quite a bit in this whole COVID crisis for people with respiratory infections. We also have uh, another site in Hamilton, New York, uh, where we make Quartermaster, which is a, um, a penicillin uh, dihydrostryptomycin-based uh, mastitis product to treat mastitis, mastitis in dairy cows. Uh, we just, uh, Dave Aiello could, could mention this as well, we just uh, signed a lease uh, to take over a 28,000 square foot uh, warehouse facility in uh, Liverpool, New York, 
uh, our veterinary business is going to, that's going to become the headquarters for our veterinary business, which is called U.S. Vet. We'll probably employ another 20 people at that site as well. So we're a New Jersey company uh, that uh, has made a significant commitment uh, to um, upstate New York, the greater Syracuse area. We've, we've done business there for many years, going back to like the early 80s. Um, again, uh, if, you, if you see the sites that we've been involved in, uh, we build everything state of the art. Uh, again, we're not, you know, uh, holding back any expenses in this site. Uh, but I, again, uh, my thoughts are is that this building, once it's completed, will probably really stand out in, in that area uh, in um, East Syracuse to Wit. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful facility. Uh, we'd like to be good neighbors. We just want to get this project done. I really want to try to get this laboratory up and running within the next couple of months because we have about a, uh, a nine to 12 month process uh, to validate all the equipment within the facility and get it approved by FDA. And, and again, because we're in the pharmaceutical industry, you know, this is something the government comes in and inspects usually annually. Uh, so, you know, we're in a business that you really can't cut any corners. Everything has to be perfect in order to keep the government happy and keep our products on the market. Uh, yeah. I think that's all I, I can say. If you want me to add anything more. Um, no, 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 no. I, I don't think any of us. So we're really here to focus on the outside material for what was uh, approved sir, and what. I just need yes. a name. I didn't get the name. I'm sorry. Oh, my name? It's uh, yes. Vincent Durante. Thank you. Thanks, Vincent. So yeah, we're not questioning the, the importance uh, or the uh, economic impact that you're providing. We, we welcome it. Uh, we're just, we had an approval on with a metal uh, coating and uh, it was changed and we're now going to now we have all of the board. You've provided all of the information, and I'm going to uh, pull the board as to uh, whether they're uh, willing to make the compromise that you've proposed. Um, Kathy, are you there? Kathy, can you unmute? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can now. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I really don't have a problem with it, with the location it's going. I just want to make sure that uh, we're aware of this material because it's a little different than what we're used to and uh, that it's going to hold up. That's that's my main concern. Okay. Before we get too much further, Emily, will you show the street view from Bridgeport? <clears throat> because my understanding, at least from the elevations that we're seeing, that that kind of north elevation, you're, you will see from the road. So that's correct. It's just screened by those trees. That's the right. point I was trying to make. And when, right. but when you add the second floor, that's what we're looking at, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, Peter. No, no. Uh, Nathan, well, that, I that's got okay. You know, it, the the um, the so that portion is very evident from Bridgeport where we're seeing now, but that's the part that doesn't that wouldn't have the EFIS. Remember, on the north elevation, it's right. only part of the building. It's only that back corner closest to the dig safe building. Facing, where you facing dig. Yeah. Right. And it's not going to be taller than the trees. Yeah. Nathan, why don't you carry, carry on then? Is, uh, is that, are you satisfied with this for uh, non precedent setting approval with the conditions of? Uh, we have I mean, it's an it's an IFAS product. We're typically not really we don't typically approve the IFAS product. You know, I think it tends to wear very easily. Um, it's a lot of upkeep, and when it starts to look run down, it it really looks run down. Um, um, I, I I tend to disagree with that, Nathan. We've had uh, working at Syracuse University. We had a similar problem with our Center for Science and Technology, and the whole south side of that building was finished in EFIS, and that's close to 30 years old, and I think it's been repainted, but it looks pretty good. We also had it on Manly Fieldhouse, where I will admit it didn't hold up to uh, lacrosse balls. <laughs> <laughs> nothing holds okay. up to Syracuse lacrosse balls. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you, thank you, Steve. So Nathan, just tell us how you feel. We're we're just gonna vote and whatever it is what it is. I mean, I wouldn't typically be on board with it. I mean, I I've never seen this reflected version of Drive It. Mm -hmm. um, you know, has it got like kind of a mica finish to it? Is that so there's sort of two, we're, we're really presenting two options here. The the drawing has the limestone finish. We can, if it's important to have that reflected finish, we can, we can we can put that reflected finish on it. Let me pause and let Mr. Aiello describe that, exactly what it is and how that affects durability. Well, I guess, which finish are you proposing here? So the, the outsolation, two tabs over from where we're looking here, that's, that's, the, that's what's drawn. Um, right. And we can provide a reflected, um, essentially, you know, finish on top of that if it's the desire of the board. That was something that was discussed in the work session. So we added these additional, uh, draw, you know, these additional material information to, to put that forward. And we, we okay, you know, so I'm just trying to understand exactly what you're proposing here. I mean, I understand the isolation aspect, but. What is the color I, I, and finish honestly, that you're proposing? The reflectance is, is kind of wasted on the back of the building, but if it's you know if it gets us across the finish line and the board feels strongly they want it to have this reflective looking finish, I mean that's fine. That's better than we think that's that's better than the than the metal finish. Honestly, we we do think this material will be more, more durable than the metal panels in a lot of ways. If you think about like upstate, um, we you see the metal panels next to this metal this re more reflected finish ethos and the metal panels are oil canning and the ethos is in great shape kind of okay kind of just, just, Nathan, just just, just uh, if you want the reflective or prefer just let me know how you feel I, I don't we've been talking about this for a while and um we just need to uh vote yeah, so I think just to, just to answer your question, Nathan, too, I think the so what's existing uh, on the proposal is a um, is the oscillation plus the limestone finish, um, something that you're typical to see uh, like across the street at Liberty Mutual. They have that on their entry. Um, so that that's what's proposed now. Um, the the reflect it is originally what we proposed uh, in in. Uh, replacement of the metal panels around the entire building, which uh, is the same exact product. However, the the top coating is is made to mimic a metal panel. So both have the uh, the same durability, um, and I think this is going to hold up very well comparative. I think to the metal panels um, we've seen in the back on Dig Safe. That, uh, you know, that that's a great facility, very nice, that an awesome job over there. Uh, it's only been a couple years in and you can already see the panel starting to buck one wave. Um, so with, with the reflect, we thought it was a, a better system in a lot of different ways uh, that picked the metal. Uh, but right now on, on this, uh, we've got uh, the limestone finish, which we feel is, is, is a good two tone effect on the building as well. Okay. You can Nathan? proceed, Peter. Pardon? You can proceed. Are you, uh, well, you, what's your, are you? Uh, I think in, in the end, if the intent is that this product is going to mimic the metal panel, the one that we originally approved, yes. and it is going to look similar, sure, I'm on board. Okay, so that's reflective. Uh, Steve, are you agree with the reflective EFIS? Sorry, Steve, I, I muted you. There was a little feedback earlier. You'll need to unmute. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm I'm all right with that. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Kathy, you were okay in the reflective as a step above in my mind. Yes, uh, you def definitely, Peter. Yeah, uh, Joe, are you on now? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm good. You're good I with that? Okay. Yeah. And I'm good with it. Is there, a, do we have Leif or, 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 or Doug? Doug, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm here. Um, I'm good with the EFIS product. Although I did have a question. There was a rendering I thought I saw on Tuesday morning that's was reflecting more of a, of a score pattern on the EFIS that mimicked or was similar to a metal panel. And 
I'm I'm not sure if that's what's being proposed now or if we're just talking about kind of a plain Jane vanilla grid on the back uh, in this kind of reflective metal. And I, I also would prefer to see the reflective kind of metal finishes as, okay. as part of this uh, package. So can we clarify what is the what is the reveal pattern that's being proposed? So if you uh, click over to oh, the alkylation plus um, PDF there on top what? there, yep, right, right, one right to the left of where we're open right now. So the reveal that we have is the one that you see on top there. So you'll have a, a V groove um, and then you'll have basically a metal uh, a metal looking finish over the the entire face of that. So what was original? What's the pattern? Uh, it, what you see is the joint pattern on the. Yep, if you can click that one. What you see is the joint pattern on the back there. Um, that's the uh, the grid layout that we would have. So the original um, kind of thought back in you know March and April was that. Uh, we would do oh, can you yep so that we would do the reflected as you see the joint layouts here um, and uh, change out the metal panels to the reflected on um, these these metal panel locations we'd have the same joint layout we'd have the same um, sheen and the same exact lab color match um, so we would switch the this product which would give us uh, you know, obviously a different material with the same overall look and joint layout. So so this in the EFIS with the reflective panel is the second option we're talking about, correct? No, metal on the other two. The other two yeah. have a metal coating. The other two sides have a metal coating, Doug. Yeah, originally we, we were. Say is what Emily has on the screen right now is the pattern that's going to be shown in the IFIS. Correct. Right. So it's it, yeah. it looks to be probably like you know eight by twelve grooves on the back of the building. Right. And then this was what was originally proposed. Yeah. So I I, I would uh, I'd like to see it you know, mimicking a little bit more on the metal panel, the vertical orientation and a little bit tighter reveals for the proportions. And then I'm all set. OK. Yeah, that... So what, what are we calling this option with the vertical grooves? This would be... so that what you what's on the screen now is the original approved site plan. This is what we approved originally in September. Yeah, yeah. OK. And, and you mimic that with the reflective. Ephus. Well, so no, what we what we proposed here is that one that, that that just is on the screen now that Emily just put up. That's that's the proposed amendment. Yeah. And what that's I'm also noticing, there's a change in that kind of brick red metal panel as well. The colors, the colors are pretty consistent. Is it called a mission yeah, red the color? But if you look at this one, you got large, large panels of red versus the smaller stacked brick look of the red in the Yeah, I think what we proposed here is the tighter joints to try to eliminate some of that oil canning and also to kind of mimic the, the building surrounding. So in the back, we've got the dig safe building that that also has the linear panels like we show here. Um, so the larger metal panels, what we found through the process have a much uh, a much greater certainty of, of bending at the joints, being that there's more material there. Right. Um, so we did uh you know to try to limit that that was our that was one of the driving factors of trying to go with the cephas product is we wanted to avoid that after spending you know so much money on the finish that we weren't going to have something that you know two three years down the road um kind of didn't look as as good as it did day one so you know so to did, try to the, the brick color that's on there is that metal or ifas metal. this is metal no, it's metal. Okay. All so you're the just red and the blue. Smaller, the yeah. smaller um, pattern. Yeah, I think this was once we started seeing a lot of these places oil canning, like um, like even up at at um, 
SU, the, the buildings that are kind of facing, you know, 81 as you're, you're passing the, the carrier down there. Right. Once you start seeing some of these like waves in the, the, the panels, it just gets concerning with these newer projects. And, you know, what we found was the, the tighter the, the joints are, the less prevalent that can be. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is just to limit, I mean, this is a major investment. We're just trying to, you know, get the most out of it longevity wise. Okay. So you have small metal panels and large scored EFIS expanses. Correct. Yeah, which I think the architect was uh, was going for kind of a two tone effect here. Um, and, uh, you know, I have no, I, I'm not an architect by any means, but that's what uh, what they've come up with and uh, and trying to, to marry the two. Doug? Are you satisfied? Yeah, so I, and re, re, repeating my repeating my point is I'm trying to unify the facade. So I understand the two tone, but I, I would like to see it more unified. And I think that can be accomplished with the EFIS uh, value engineered option they're presenting with the reflective coating. OK. Does everyone else agree with that? Steve, yeah, cool. Yes. <laughs> OK. Kathy, yes. All right. I defer um, to the architect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm going to make a motion and I'm going to because part of this motion is going to have this. Uh, we're going to need to word this very uh, precisely. The motion to approve the change in materials is presented by the applicant as follows. Would uh, one of the architects like to give me that language, please? That the two sides would be metal and the other two sides would be reflective panels as shown so i think i think what we're looking at is the gray color shown on the proposed drawings to be the drive it with the reflective metal coating yep in a tighter pattern or reveal pattern than shown to mimic the original design okay and so add that, Jamie, and then with the condition that the mock-up of the facts. Excuse me. It, it was just which facade is it? It's only one side, I heard. Southeast, side. west, north, and west. Oh, north and yeah. west. Thank you. And with a condition that a mock-up of the specs be presented to the Department of Planning and Zoning and the Planning Board consultant for the final approval, except as modified here in all of their findings and conditions on the site plan approval dated. Uh, whatever date that is, uh, I can't call up. Uh, September. It was September. September 26th, 2019. Okay. And this 2019. is Brody Smith speaking. I mean, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. If if I could be heard, I, I just wanted to ask a question for clarity. Go ahead. So I, I just want to give Mr. Aiello a chance to speak since we're changing the, the size of the reveals. Do, do you know, Dave, is that from a material point of view, is that possible? Can we get that material in those smaller reveals that are being asked for? Uh, I mean, I think anything's possible. I think by the time we kind of go to that length, um, I'm not sure uh, if there's really any economic savings there, um, but we can certainly look into that. Okay, well, that's gonna be the motion. Uh, Thank you, David. I appreciate that. Uh, but you'll have the opportunity, uh, the staff and, and our consultant. Um, that's the motion, and somebody moved it. I moved it. May somebody second it? I'll second, Steve. Steve. All in favor? Nathan, aye. Joe, Joe aye. Steve, aye. Doug, aye. Peter, aye. All right, thank you. Taco Bell. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I think we uh, I defer to Emily or Nick. Uh, are we do we reach the finish line with these latest drawings? Um, so we did get updated plans um, and this did address um, one of the conditions we had earlier about changing from stone mulch to uh, 
a bark mulch uh, for the landscape plan. And then the new yep. plants that were provided were for, siting, for signage and lighting. Um, all of the lighting um, comments were addressed. This would have been about the spill, uh, the max average, and the pole heights. So those um, have all been brought up to code. Um, the only outstanding things I might mention is in the latest application, they noted that the number available would be added to the monument sign, but it is not shown on the plan of that sign. And okay, I, um, what's going to be the motion? What was going to be added? A, the address. So they yes. Okay. They're going to put an address in this monument in the in the base, and then the only other item that I saw was that they um, don't have. Um, we typically have an outline for the um, signage on the building that shows the the band. Um, and while that's in the details, it's not shown on the elevation. But it is in okay the detail. I think it's okay if it's in the detail. These purposes. Okay. Thank you. So we're 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 set. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the lighting and signage plan as presented as modification of site plan approval for the board dated Nick. July 9th, 2020. July 9th, 20, except as modified herein. Um, hey, Peter, hold on yeah. one second. I got a question. Sorry. That's okay. Are we showing signage on three sides here? Yeah, but they're different. Yeah. Yes, we we had approved that on okay. the, the. Okay. They had okay. the DBA variance for DBA that. DBA allowed it. Great, thank yep. you. Uh, and then the, the the address will be added to the sign. Uh, and then the set is modified here, and all other findings and conditions of site plan approved, uh, dated uh, July 9th, twenty twenty, are in full force and effect. That's the motion. May I have a second? I'll second oh. Peter Kathy. Thank you. All in favor? Nathan I. Steve so, I. Kathy I. Doug I. I heard Joe I and Peter I. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate the help. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Who, who, was here, who was here for Taco Bell, please? Mike McCracken. Thank you. And Steve Wilson from Bowler. Thank you, Mike and Steve. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, alpha grading and filling permit. Um, before I do that, Nick, is the Enterprise off? Is that what I heard? Correct. The Enterprise team withdrew their application for the okay. patio modification to the site. Why don't you mention to the group why? Um, they were proposing this um, to allow for a seating area for their uh, staff at the Enterprise 3 building uh, along Wide, Wide Waters Parkway. Uh, it has been withdrawn due to time constraints. They are not, uh, they cannot feasibly do this with their construction season. Okay. All right, so now we have the alpha uh do we have is that in rich on the on the um, meeting i'm on peter thank you yeah. hey peter it's, it's richard russell okay good evening all right uh Who else is on got... mr. mr rosselli and whom ed and ed ed thank you so i think we've 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 uh added this around enough times uh we have the, uh, a resolution that's been submitted, and uh, I hope you've all reviewed it, but I think because of the importance, I want to read it. Um, do you recommend I also read the conditions of this, uh, Jamie? I, I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, and I know there's one condition that we just needed to discuss, number four. Yes, right. we'll do that. Let me, okay. we, we, we'll get to that. Let me get to... Uh, the alpha grading and filling permit resolutions, August 13th, 2020. Uh, motion to approve the site plan herein for grading and filling with the following findings and conclusions and conditions. Prior to application herein, the applicant had presented an application to the board for a plan approval for uses and improvements 
to the project site, which is uh, 127.35 acre reclaimed quarry, which is in a high tech zoning district in the town. However, that application was withdrawn. So the application herein is for planning board site plan approval in connection with a quote, grading and filling unquote permit only as required by the town of DeWitt code. On June 11, 2020, this board declared this action type one action for seeker and declared itself lead agency and sent the required notices to interested and involved agencies. More than 30 days have passed since the notice of lead agency were sent and there have been no responses or objections thereto. This board has reviewed the FEAF of the applicant submitted with the application and, and a part of the uh, two of uh, the FEAF and finds that as to the grading and filling activities herein and provided all conditions of this approval are complied with this board issues a negative C Corps de declaration for the project finding no significant adverse environmental impacts by reason of the grading and filling permit. This board further finds that the due to the unique nature of this site and the grading and filling permit being specific and limited, the reviews uh, pursuant to seeker as to the grading and filling permit only is uh, not segmentation under seeker and is specific to this action. Accordingly, the negative seeker declaration here and is not construed as being applicable to any other action project future construction or improvements that may be requested or required on this property. This board has reviewed uh, the Anadaga County Planning Board referrals of July 1st, 2020 and has accepted the modifications therein relating to the applicant being required to comply with the requirements of the DOT and that is a condition of this approval. This board and the applicant uh, apparently agree that the property must undergo significant grading and filling and potentially uh, prepare the site for any future development that would be in accordance with the high tech district of the town. Appropriate redevelopment of this ultimate is the ultimate goal. Accordingly, significant deliberation and discussion with the applicant, the DEC, the town of towns consultants and the planning board have been uh, had to assure that only fill and materials appropriate to the goal of redevelopment are utilized. This board takes no position as to any private covenants which may affect this uh, approval or conditions therein. This condition here and also has taken into account the proximity of the project to the residential neighbors. In addition to any findings and conditions above the following conditions of this approval to which this applicant has agreed. Acceptable fill materials shall be materials imported for use of fill shall be in accordance with the definition of fill materials general fill part four of the grade adjustment um, this discretion letter of Part 360 series uh, regulations dated September 19, 2019, attached here to no other materials are permitted. There shall be no processing of fill materials other than materials as stated above at this property. The permitted action herein is within the jurisdiction of the town of DeWitt, grading and filling permit, notwithstanding anything to the contrary in any DEC permit or otherwise. The applicant is prohibited from running any operation involves processing or recycling solid waste or accepting any solid waste. Demolition to demolition continue on the remains of concrete structure at south end of site provide erosion control measures as required to perform this work. Area fill placed adjacent to the concrete structure shall be stabilized with a seating lawn upon completion of the demolition activities. Demolition, the structure shall occur fall 2020, winter 2021, and, and full site stabilization should be completed by spring 2021. Three, a summary of report filing acti filling activities, including origin and cubic yard shall be submitted to the Department of Planning and Zoning. Four, this is uh, material shall be compacted. Uh, the question is, uh, this is now offline, how frequently and, uh, and how much fill? So is there, does our consultant want to recommend a, a language for this that would be acceptable to the applicant? Materials should be I, compacted. How often? And at what depth? So well, uh, we wanted to. We I think it. We would be open to graded, rolled, and compacted. I don't know if there's a depth that we want to assign to it. 
How do we know on what lifts you'll be compacting? What dimension lifts? Um, well, we can. I'm not sure how we'll. Uh, I mean, it would be. I think we wanted to leave it graded, rolled, and compacted per generally accepted standards. Uh, uh, I don't what are those generally accepted standards? Well, well, there, there's no way you're going to ever define that, Nathan, because I mean, you're hauling, you could be hauling gravel in, you could be hauling clay in. There's no way of, no way of uh, doing any compaction tests because you don't have a proctor of any of the material. The material is going to vary. Well, not necessarily, we, really, yeah, not necessarily a proctor or a test, but are we saying you know in you know should be rolled and graded in two foot lifts, three foot lifts, five foot lifts? Well, I think I mean, it would be who of them anyway to do something because otherwise they wouldn't be able to back trucks over it when they did fill it. So. Right, I know, yeah. but if we're trying to define what the general practice is, you know, so that it's not done in 12 or 15 foot lifts. Well, it, it won't be done in 12. I, I would say if we were going to, you could say uh, three to five foot lifts. That's about, I don't, I don't think you can define one uh, down to the foot, but I, I think we could work within a range. Is that, is that acceptable to the board? That would be fine with this me. Is, this is Doug. I, I don't really have an opinion one way or the other. I think the standard, though, that we're really talking about is is the description in the resolution that says suitable for future development. And I think it's just important to say, and I'm not objecting to this project, but I think it's important to say that this fill really doesn't make this site buildable or very difficult to build on in a high tech district the way the way that this is uh, being presented. So as long as that's clear to the board, and I know the applicant has probably pondered this question too, but I think that's the reality of, of this. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have an opinion on on specifics okay. of the okay. lifts and compaction. Well, it'll be up to, you know, the value will be dependent upon how well this compaction works and whether it becomes well, a recreation fee. Oh, we, we, could, we agree area. with that. Okay. I think well, any I'll future developer has got to, Got to do his own soil test, and he'll have to worry about about that. I mean, it's agreed. We are not preparing this site for any specific construction. Right. Okay. Let's. Uh, material shall be compacted and graded um, uh, in um, three to five foot lifts. Is that the correct terminology? Why don't uh, we generally see? accepted. Yeah. 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 I would be seeing. Yeah, general in generally in three to five foot lifts. Yeah, okay. All right, number five, no dumping, delivery, or construction shall commence prior to 7 a.m. or later than 7.30 p.m. Six, access road shall be continually maintained from uh, ruts and potholes and shall be cleaned and uh, swept periodically or at the request of the code enforcement officer if it's determined the road is not being maintained. Seven. Number one, phase one shall be modified to include the entire stormwater management area along the northern northeastern portion of the filling area adjacent to the evergreen buffer. After achieving the finished elevation in accordance with the approved grading plan, the area must be top dressed with six inches of screen topsoil and seeded with low mold meadow or wildflower seed mix. Um, no other phases shall commence until phase one is completed. Eight. A grading and filling permit shall be issued for a period not to exceed four years from the date of issuance. If the project has not been completed within the allowable four years, a new permit must be applied, applied for under the same conditions uh, of the planning board approval dated. That would be today. Is that accurate? August 13th, 2020. Jamie? Correct. Except, however, any subsequent permit will be issued annually. Um, except for the grading and filling permitted by this resolution, any other activity or action of development on the site is not approved and will require further site plan approval permits or actions as may be required on the town of Dewey Code. Additionally, this approval is for plans and other submitted documents, uh, quote, site plan documents that have been signed by the planning board chairperson and the applicant 
requires that all of the work shown be completed by the applicant in order for the certificate of occupancy or compliance to be issued. Any proposed changes, additions, deletions, scope of work, materials from the site plan document not approved and are not subject to further and are subject to further site plan review pursuant to the town to code section 192 dash 122 that's the motion may I have a second please i'll second nathan nathan all in favor can we have some discussion please sure i'm still not in favor of this time frame i think it's a long time for these neighbors to be bothered. You know, it's going to be 13 hours a day. That That's a long time. And I think Sakba agreed with me. <laughs> what, what is the town yeah. ordinance? What's the town ordinance? Well, that town ordinance is for construction. Yeah, well, Steve, I got to say this, this is Andy. Um, I mean, this, this site's been operating as a mine and a cement plant for the better part of uh, probably five to six decades. Um, most recently, it's been under I think a mine people are tired of it, Andy. <laughs> I understand that, but I, you're, you're kind of, you're restricting these guys to, I mean, they're not going to go out and buy fill. This, this only comes when yeah. they have projects available. It may be shorter. Um, you know, originally they were requesting five years, and I I requested no, to I put this at four. Are you talking about the hours, Steve? No, yes. I, you're talking oh. about seven a.m. to seven thirty p.m. or the duration of four years, Steve? Yeah. I'm I'm talking about the hours. I apologize. I misunderstood. Okay, that's okay. We that one. So now the hours. What is the town ordinance? For noise? That is the ordinance. Okay. Yep. Well, I I. I'm comfortable with that. Um, anybody else want to weigh in? I thought Mark mentioned the other day that the DEC ordinance restricts it just to daylight hours, which may differ from hours. Is that correct? Well, in, in the summertime, that can be even longer. Right, but it could yeah. be 4 p.m. in the winter. I which like one, the, whichever one is restrictive. I think the, the 7 to 7.30. We, we do have, we did say it had to be in accordance with those DEC regulations, I believe. Um, I think there's a guest on that has a question. Yes. Yeah. I mean, can we say, you know, per DEC regulations, but no later than 730? I mean, I yeah. agree with the fact that, you know, it could be 10 o'clock at night, but, you know, for our town, we don't allow anything past 730. I, I, I agree with that. We'll so there's an, that. Ann, an Ann Donahue who has a, a raised hand. I don't know, uh, Ann, you're on mute if you had a question. She was asking, is anyone from the town going to monitor what they're dumping? <laughs> Not daily, but yes, we will be getting their um, reports. <coughs> Excuse me, reports. I believe and we said it was um, twice a year. Reviewing the reports. Yeah. I mean, Andy's Andy's going to be getting a SWIP report, and that usually has a, a whole host of photos. So, and you're getting that weekly. Yeah. And if there are five acres, it's probably twice a week, right? So, yep. I mean, you can, even if you require more photos on the SWIP inspection, which is, I guess, entirely up to, to our code enforcement office, they can, you know, they can see what's going on or kind of monitor it that way, you know. Good point. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Steve, are you comfortable with the with the? Uh, you raised a question. Are you comfortable now with the new language? That it was, uh, the, no, the I'm not. Okay, so uh, you, uh, what's your what? the, lang the language that I have right now? No dumping, delivery, or construction shall commence uh, prior to seven a.m. or later than seven p.m. or according to DEC regulations, if shorter time frames. Correct. Okay. 
Anne had a follow-up question of, is the DEC going to be testing the soil? I don't believe so, but I-, I Yeah. I I, not, not in relation to this filling project. I'm, I'm sure at some future development, uh, that, that'll be part of their um, phased environmental yeah. process. Approvals. But we also right. have in our in our language there that you know the filling the fill material is clean fill. It is gravel and other materials that are acceptable by DEC standards for clean fill. Correct. So by by law, they you can have that. Steve, then is your vote a no or is it? Is yes, it, I'm voting no. Okay. Nathan. Aye. Yes. Joe. Joe. Yes. Yes, Joe. Kathy? Yes, Kathy. Okay. Uh, okay. Doug? Uh, Doug? Doug, yes. And Peter, yes. And Peter, yes. All right. So it carries um, uh, five, to, five to one or six to one. Jamie, you got the tally. Six. I have it. Six. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Improved. And uh, Thank you all. Thank you for everybody's uh, patience and forbearance and having this uh, completed. Uh, consultants, Andy, uh, Rich, and Ed, thank you very much. Yep. Thank board. you. Yeah, this is Rich Rosselli, Peter. Thank you for uh, taking the lead and asking all the difficult questions and having this be a successful project for the town and for Rosselli. Thank you very much. No, you know, it's this is an unusual one, but we we um, work through it. So thank you all. Uh, we will. Um, there's no other business to be conducted. Jamie. Nothing. Nick, Andy. Uh, then I uh, make a motion um, at 7.52 to adjourn the meeting. I'll second, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Steve, hi. Thank you, Steve. Kathy, I. Thanks, Kathy. Peter, I. Doug. I'm almost done. I. <laughs> all right. Good night. Thank you all. Well done. Good night, Good night, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Be sure to be sure to cancel to.